I'm Lori Parisi, a member of the Global Medical Affairs team at Janssen, and I'm here today with Dr. Paula Rodriguez Otero, specialist in hematology at Clinica Universidad de Navarra, to talk about the multiple myeloma call to action developed by the Global Collaboration Council. Welcome, Dr. Rodriguez. It's a pleasure to be able to speak with you today about such an important topic. Can you tell me a bit about the multiple myeloma call to action and why you decided to be involved in its development? Why is it so important now? So the Multiple Myeloma Call to Action a Global Collaboration Council is a Janssen a initiative. Ten different countries were represented from five different continents. So it's really a, a worldwide perspective aiming really to, to identify a, a fields in related to myeloma in which we can do better. Now I think it's the good time because we have significantly improved the treatments that we have uh, for our patients. We are now in a, in a situation that we can really uh, 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 identify those needs and eventually move forward and aiming to, to overcome those. Thank you, and uh, yeah, the timing is definitely right for an, an innovative project like this. Um, it's a first of its kind initiative, and as you mentioned, you've identified four different unmet needs. So today, um, I'd like for us to focus on the first unmet need around delays in timely diagnosis of multiple myeloma. Can you share with us some of the main factors that lead to delays in the timely diagnosis? Yes, yeah, so I think that this is a very, very important topic, and we see it every day in the clinics when we are, you know, in front of a newly diagnosed myeloma patient, when you do the medical, you know, the, 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 the anamnesis in the medical history, you, you always have these kind of conversations. There are several uh, aspects that are important that, that may explain these delays in diagnosis. So first of all, the symptoms are not specific. Sometimes the symptoms can be a, a mask by a, I don't know, a, I don't know, arthrosis or bone pain for other re reasons. And sometimes patients go to see their primary care physician and they just prescribe some painkillers or, or something, you know, uh, like that just to, to treat the symptoms. And because it sometimes are so prevalent at that age, they are not going into more investigations. And this is some of the, of the, reasons why the, the diagnosis sometimes is delayed. So as a physician, you know, why do you consider a timely diagnosis to be so critical specifically for multiple myeloma? Yeah, so this is uh, essential. So first of all, because we are going to uh, diagnose the patients with uh, a lower tumor burden uh, and more importantly, with a lower burden of the disease in terms of symptoms, uh, and organ damage uh, and other complications that may sometimes limit the possibility of treating these patients with the optimal strategy. So it's not the same if you treat a patient with, I don't know, a recurrent and severe infection. So these patients will come to you and will start the therapy in a less optimal situation. So that is why it's so important. By definition, it is disseminated. So it's not only about prognosis, not only. So it, it, this is one of, of one part, but it's also how the patient is feeling. How are the symptoms the patient? How is the performance status of the patient? That clearly makes a difference in, in a, at the time of the starting treatment. So Dr. Rodriguez, what, what are some of the ways, uh, including technology, that you see the multiple myeloma community, you know, starting to overcome these barriers? Yeah, so I think that in the last years, we, you know, the access to technology, the access to imaging techniques, PET CT, whole body MRI, whole body CT scans, all these, uh, the access to all these techniques has uh, improved, but still there are some places in the world, countries in which this access can uh, be limited. And also they are, they, we have now tools, very easy tools that can be done in the primary care uh, facilities to really get this suspicion of the disease, because uh, this is typical. We always say in, in, in medicine that you cannot di diagnose what you do not suspect. Yes, one of the things I have noticed in the call to action is that, you know, patients 
on average see three providers before they get a diagnosis. And often those first interactions are in the primary care, the non-specialty setting. So, you know, certainly uh, shortening that time frame to get to a specialist is one way to do that. And then also, as you mentioned, really heightening the awareness um, in some of those non-specialty settings of what to look for hopefully can make a really big difference. When you're sitting at the table with your colleagues in the Global Collaboration Forum as a physician, you know, what do you really see as your role in contributing to the overall objectives of the call to action and some of the proposals presented? Um, and are there some concrete actions that you, you know, plan to take to address the need for a more timely diagnosis? Yeah, so I think that our role, so if each of us uh, uh, working in this uh, call to action uh, council is to provide our perspective. So we, we work in different countries, different hospitals, university hospitals, academic hospitals. So it's, uh, we do, each of us have a different view of the problems and the challenges that we have uh, uh, treating myeloma patients. Also, we have worked with patient associations, nurses. So we we aim for this uh, collaboration uh, of all the myeloma uh, a community, addressing these needs, uh, working uh, together to really identify the, the places where we need to do better and, and provide some some solutions or some specific actions that others can, can follow. Regarding my concrete action that I, I plan to take, particularly uh, regarding the, the, this uh, first and met need, to, the delay in the diagnosis, uh, we are working uh, in our institution together with our colleagues from the public um, hospital to, uh, and we have a meeting tomorrow with uh, physicians working in the primary uh, care uh, clinics to create this awareness, the suspicion of the disease. We are going to discuss different scenarios, patients in which we need to, sus to think about a possible diagnosis of multiple myeloma. So since uh, the call to action, uh, was launched at the European Hematology Association's annual meeting earlier this year. How has the multiple myeloma community taken note? This is a way to start the conversation to really uh, highlight some of the aspects of the disease that are not really well covered or that still we can do better to really uh, involve the, the more people that will be involved, the better. Um, Dr. Rodriguez, I'd, I'd really just, first of all, like to thank you uh, for your partnership and your leadership with the Multiple Myeloma Call to Action, uh, and also for spending uh, your time here today to really share your expert perspectives on you know, why a timely diagnosis in multiple myeloma is so important and for really, I think, bringing some of the specifics of the call to action to life for us. So thank you very much. Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs>